Okay, FAQ number 72. I realize this is a controversial question, and certainly if you have young children, this is not an appropriate one, but this is a question that I was asked, and I'm not going to back away from it because it's embarrassing or something like this. It is a question, and a valid question, and that is, is masturbation a sin? Okay, uh, now you're going to be turned, most people are going to turn you to Genesis chapter 38. Let's go here, Genesis chapter 38 and verse 9. Okay, well, actually, we'll start at verse 8. Uh, and Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest, he, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So, I've heard this thing, preachers will say, well, that, see, that's masturbation. That's self-pleasuring and things like that. No, it's not. Uh, that's actually birth control, okay, a form of birth control. He obviously was physically with uh, this brother's wife there. Um, and I don't know, where does it say her name is? Shua, daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, okay? And this woman, Shua, he goes in, Onan goes into her, and he is sexually active with her. And instead of injecting his seed into her to form a child, he spilled it on the ground. Okay, And the thing displeases the Lord because there's in the Old Testament, if a brother dies and he's got a wife, well, she's depending upon him you know, having offspring so that her name there and, and things and her, her wealth and everything can be you know, preserved. If she doesn't have any descendants, that's a kind of a problem. So in the Old Testament, it was oftentimes a brother dies, okay, now take her, you know, his wife, a brother's wife, your sister-in-law, and make her your wife. And now she's your responsibility. You know, it's kind of a way of taking care of your family members and things like that. Okay, and now, you know, I don't believe in that for today. That's, that's not, you know, this has passed away. But the point is, you know, he, it's not that he goes in there and he's masturbating or something and spills it on the ground. Uh, that's not what's going on there. This was uh, so to use that to try and condemn masturbation, it doesn't work. Okay, um, go in your New Testament to First Corinthians chapter seven. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Okay, now again, you know, I've heard people try to say that masturbation falls under the realm of fornication. Uh, no, it doesn't. Fornication is flesh joining flesh uh, outside of the bounds of marriage. Uh, again, it's not the same thing as fornication. But it's very clear here. Let's continue. Um, verse 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. I say therefore to, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So there's no thing in there saying, Paul saying, okay, if you're, if you're single and you're burning, well then just pleasure yourself and that way that gets rid of the burning. Because ironically, it doesn't. Okay, if you are a single person and you are burning with lust uh, and you take your way out of that thing is through masturbation, it's not going to take care of it. It might temporarily, but it's just going to get worse and worse. And let me show you the problem with that. Turning your Bible to James. James chapter 1. Um, James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Okay, if you are getting into masturbation and you are a single person in your teens or whatever else, um, I can guarantee you that the, that the masturbation is accompanying 
pornography or some kind of uh, pornographic images or something like that. And even if you don't have it right there, it still is lust in your mind. And that lust is going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, the nature of perversion is you have to continually do things more and more perverse to get the thrill. And so you might start out looking at soft core pornography, but as time goes by and the masturbation addiction gets worse and worse and worse, you're going to have to go through harder, more and more hardcore types of pornography to get the same thrill that you once did with the soft core stuff. Masturbation is self-destructive. Uh, it's not just some kind of a little fly there, excuse me. Springtime, you know, it's little flies coming out. But um, masturbation is not some kind of a, just a simple, basic little thing that single people can do, and it just takes care of the problem, and then you're fine for a long time. It doesn't work that way. Um, masturbation is, is, is a selfish act, and um, if you're having problems with lust and burning, um, I suggest that you uh, listen to the pornography epidemic thing if you are addicted to pornography. Um, and I mean, you, it's a very, very difficult thing. And I, and I understand right now, uh, sexual lust is, is at an all-time high. Um, I mean, it's insane. The subliminals that, that we live under, uh, go into the store, there's so many sexual subliminals. They're all over television and music. Uh, heavy beat and things. I mean, you can be totally innocent and try to avoid this stuff and it's just going to be, you're going to be bombarded with it. And I mean, we're heading into uh, summertime. I mean, I like living in a northern climate because, you know, people dress, you know, they cover themselves up for longer periods of the year. But man, you live down in Florida or California or someplace like that, you know, where it's warm all the time, uh, you're, you're being bombarded with lust, issues of lust. And, um, the best, my best advice is, you know, just study the Bible as much as you can. Uh, stay away from pornography. And um, if you are, if you don't have a problem with lust and you don't really ever have a problem with masturbation or anything like that, well, really try to focus on serving the Lord with your life. But uh, if you are burning with lust and really having problems there, uh, you need to pray fervently. And I'm talking fasting and prayer. Uh, that God would provide you with a husband or a wife. And, you know, depending if you're a man or a woman there, you know, obviously if you're a man, don't go after another man because you're not going to help yourself there with lust issues. That's just, um, you know, being turned over to a reprobate mind. And um, and it's funny because they actually burn in their lust. It talk, talks about there in Romans chapter 1. But the point is, you know, marriage is, is a very important thing. Um, to avoid that life of being tempted to masturbate and tempted to look at pornography and, and just being enticed all the time. Um, you're just, if you're just walking around just like a, like an inferno of lust, you know, just everywhere you go and you're, it's being triggered and everything else, you need to really take some time to find that right person uh, to get married and, you know, make sure that they're saved or if they're lost, you know, lead them to the Lord, make sure that they're truly saved, read the Bible with them and stuff. If you see that there's, yeah, there's definite fruits here that this person got saved, then, you know, get married according to the will of the Lord there. Um, but that's very important. And, you know, when you, when you get married and you have a proper relationship, um, let me look up one other verse. I'm trying to think of where this one's at. Uh, let me look, look up a verse here really quickly. Um, Okay. All right, got it. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Okay, God will judge you if you have these sex problems and things like that, and, and if you're a porn addict and masturbating and all that stuff, you're under God's judgment. Okay, uh, it's a bad place to be. But the fact of the matter is when you get married, um, having a normal sexual relationship with your wife is totally fine and is far better than anything that you're ever going to experience in masturbation because you're you're bringing pleasure to somebody else while bringing pleasure to yourself. Uh, it's not just this self, you know, selfish thing of pleasuring yourself um, and and being triggered by lust. 
So is masturbation a sin? Absolutely. Yes, it is. Uh, you're not going to be able to have a real good relationship with the Lord if you have a problem with masturbation. Uh, you need to you know, get that thing under control and get married. 